Joseph King with the Landscape King Podcast. If you don't know who we are, we're a landscape company in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We started in 2017, and we started this podcast to start educating people about landscaping, what we've learned, and some a little bit about business. Last week, we had an episode with Toby Massengale where we talked about business and kind of his journey of how he grew his business, sold his business, and, and what he's doing now to help business owners. But this week, we're going to talk about plants again. This week, we're talking about the top 10 plants that grow in the shade in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So a lot of times, whenever people have a, a full shade backyard, people are discouraged because they don't think they can have anything that looks really nice in this full shade area. But it couldn't be further from the truth. Sometimes I really like planting in a full shade because you can have a, a lot more. There's a really nice palette that we can use in that area. So getting right into it, the top 10 plants that grow in shade in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number one, Ligularia. Now this plant has a big wide leaf on it. Uh, it's also called spotted leopard plant. It's also called tractor seat plant, but it's just really cool texture in a full shade area. It even makes a little flower as well that comes up a little yellow flower. What we've done with it is we've planted it in masses where we try to put maybe 10, 15 of them together and they look really neat. You can also use it as an accent plant where you already have a mass of something else and you, you just put that in there. But these do great in, in full shade, maybe partial shade, but they, they would not be happy in full sun. The next plant is Camellia japonica. So we talked about camellias in one of the really common plants. Camellia sasanquas and Camellia japonicas, they both can grow in the shade, but the Camellia sasanquas do much better in the full sun. The Camellia japonicas can kind of get acclimated in the full sun, but they're really a full shade plant. Everybody knows them in the winter when they're blooming. That's what's great about them. They have a dark, glossy, evergreen leaf, that, but does bloom in the late fall, early winter with super beautiful flowers. The Camellia japonica, there's a lot of different colors, a lot of different varieties. Most of the time, they're going to get pretty large, but... Camellia japonica is a, another one that we recommend. Number three is the Japanese maple. So the weeping Japanese maple, this is the red leaf. I love when we have a shady or filtered sunlight area that we can go ahead and put that in. The, the weeping Japanese maple is going to get about six to eight feet tall. There's one called uh, Blood Good that is going to get larger as well. And that one can do a little bit better in the full sun. But the weeping is going to do the best in the shade. And it gives you a nice contrast when you have a lot of things that are green to have that nice red leaf on it. Number four, the soft caress Mahonia. Now this one as well could do okay in the sun, but it's really going to thrive in that shady area. This one does make little kind of yellow leaves as well. I mean, yellow uh, flowers as well, but it has a, a really uh, different texture to it. That, that makes it stand out in a landscape and look really awesome. And that, now there is another Mahonia that people will know that makes the blueberries. And it's also the one that has kind of that pokey leaf to it as well. I really like the soft caress better, but both pretty cool and both will, will do pretty well in the shade. Uh, number five, this one's like an alien dinosaur looking plant, the split leaf philodendron. So split leaf philodendron, is going to die back in the winter, but it does come back every year. And so far, the things we've talked about, Ligularia does die back in the winter too, but it comes back. You can try to cover them, but it's it's going to come back. But the Camellia japonica is going to be evergreen. The, the weeping Japanese maple is going to be deciduous. It, it loses the leaves, but it does come back. The soft caress Mahonia is going to be evergreen. And then the split leaf philodendron. So with this one, I mean, they get pretty big. And, and a lot of times people will plant them in the corners of um, kind of in the corner of a landscape or the corner of a house, either on the corner or kind of where the uh, they just get really big. They get they get massive. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they do. They Yeah. Jim's got some. They do really well in uh, in full shade areas. They can get acclimated to to more sunnier spots, but they do better in the shade. And I, I'll use them sometimes in an accent plant as well, or focal point. 
Sometimes they look really cool in a mass as well. So the next, so number six are ferns. It's a lot of different variety of ferns that we can plant in South Louisiana, but any type of fern that's going to just spread and, and look really nice in a mass, that's what we're going to want to put in the, in the shady spot. And I like them too because some of them can withstand more sun, like the foxtail fern is going to be able to handle that a little bit better. Um, but there's other ferns that, that would not like the, the holly leaf fern is a really cool one where we actually made a mistake a few years ago and we put it in a full sun area or we put it in a spot where we did not realize how much sun it was going to get and they started burning a little bit on us. So definitely the holly leaf fern would be one that would do better in the shade. There's a southern wood fern. There's the um, asparagus fern, which is similar to similar to the foxtail, the Kimberly Queen, a macho fern. Some of those can can take that that full sun a little bit better, but they they do really well in the shade as well. So number seven is monkey grass. Now monkey grass, then there's liriope as well. Um, there's a dwarf mon- monkey grass or mondo grass. The dwarf mondo really doesn't like the full sun. It's going to need at least partial shade, maybe partial sun. And that's the one I'm really talking about. Even the evergreen giant liriope does, they do okay in, in full sun, but they're really happier in the shade. They're a nice border plant, and you can also plant them in a mass too if you're just trying to fill up a, a big area. Sometimes ground covers can be great because they do fill up a big area, but sometimes it's tricky to keep weeds out of them. Sometimes they'll choke out all the weeds. Number seven is monkey grass. Number eight are hydrangeas. Now, we did talk about hydrangeas before in the really common plants. There is limelight hydrangea that can handle more of the full sun area, but the endless summers, um, some of the older varieties of hydrangeas as well, they're really going to do better in a shady spot. Even the, the limelight can do well, but hydrangeas, are, if you don't know what they are, if you've ever seen that purple, blue, big mop head uh, looking flower, that's the hydrangea. They are deciduous as well, so they do lose their leaves in the wintertime, but they come back every year and they're just beautiful in the summer when they bloom. Number nine is the American Beauty Berry. When, when someone is talking about native plants, I, I'm always, this is my favorite native plant. Uh, and it, it does really well in a, in a shadier spot. It is, it's the one that I do know the scientific name for. I don't know scientific names of all the plants, but that was the Calicarpa Americana. And it makes a really cool cluster of these, these purple berries. It does lose its leaves, like I said, in the winter, but they do come back. And it can get some nice size on it as well. There's some dwarf varieties that stay smaller. There's a few different colors that they, they have available as well. But mostly this one's going to be a shade-loving plant. Maybe that filtered sunlight, but, but really in that shade would do great. The last one is not one that we plant very often, but number 10 is cast iron plant. And I put this one on the list because it's just a bulletproof plant. Now, there are times where... It'll, it'll get some spots on it. Sometimes if it gets too much sun, it'll burn a little bit. But in a deep shade area, this cast iron plant is really happy. You'll often see them under oak trees, and they're really happy in those spaces. So those are our top 10 plants that grow well in the shade in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Another thing we're starting is plant of the week. So we're going to start posting each week just our favorite plant that we want to tell you about that week. We're going to post it on Instagram, on Facebook, and then we'll have the video as well on Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube. But throughout the week, we'll post pictures of that plant. So this past week, that plant was distillium. And coming up Monday, you'll find out the plant of the week. So keep joining in with us. We're going to keep giving you all kind of information. If you got questions, if you want us to talk about something specific on the podcast, email us, text us, reach out to us, and let's... Let's answer your questions. So Joseph with Landscape King, let's plant some plants.